Thank you to the people who bought training and thank you to the people who are about to buy training. And shout out to the Nerd Tribe. Recently, I put out in the video that I reported someone who was renting a unit in this building on Airbnb. Now, they actually knew before I reported them, but let me go ahead and explain to you why I don't wanna live in the hotel. If I wanted to live in the hotel, I would have moved to a hotel. There's a reason that I moved here. And I'm quite sure the people who are paying $10,000 per month for a penthouse do not want to be living in a hotel, which is a strange, strange thing because across the street is the Ritz Carlton residences and these are condos that are included in a hotel, but they're separated. The residences are on top of the building and the hotels on the lower floors. But here's the reason. Years ago, when I was living in a house, I was living in a 5,000 square foot home. It never occurred to me to put those extra bedrooms on Airbnb. I'm gonna to explain to you why. Number one, I had no problem paying the mortgage. No problem whatsoever. Number two, and hear me out here, being in the service industry, and that's what you are doing when you're on Airbnb or Toro, you're serving people. I didn't wanna be in a situation where I had to meet people, check them in, give them a key. It's just a lot of hassle to me, to me, and one of the things that I'm beginning to see because there's people who are leaving comments, it's like, hey, you need to watch yourself or hey, you should let him rent out his unit. I'm like, you guys don't get it. You guys simply don't get it. I moved here and let me go ahead and explain to you uh, what's going to happen in the future. I've had, always had this itch to live in a high rise hotel. That itch has been scratched. So next year I'll be rolling back into a house. But once again, I have come to understand certain things about myself. And I'm about to say it and I'm going to come across as an elitist asshole. I don't like being around certain people. I just don't. I don't like being around ghetto people. I don't like being around loud people. I don't like being around people who aspire to be a rapper or entertainment. I have no desire to be around those people, none whatsoever. And one of the things that is happening here is you're getting people who are kind of in that spot. Because once again, I had this video. Money does not equate to class. You have a lot of trashy people making a lot of money. Facts, Cardi B. I feel that you don't understand the ability to live in a certain environment. And the, the people's like, let that man rent out his unit on Airbnb. I can guarantee you my old house, there was no one renting a house on Airbnb. I can guarantee you there was no one renting a room on Airbnb. See, one of the things I discovered once I elevated to a certain social class is, and I'm gonna just speak plainly, when you have poor people, people who are struggling to make a living, people who are catching economic hell. There's a lot of erroneous conclusions. There is a social myth that the top 1% is keeping the other 99% down intentionally. And this is one of the things that, and I'm about to say it, once again, I may come across as an elitist asshole. A lot of people are poor because they're not that bright, once again. You, know, you guys know my stance on crypto. And I've literally had people like, I made money with crypto. Like, all right, once again, if you do not show me information that has your government name on it in an account, I'm not gonna take that as proof because anyone can screenshot a crypto wallet offline. So let's stop with that. But one of the things that I consistently see, and this is why poor people stay poor. Number one, they believe in myths. There are some manifestation channels on YouTube. Now, to a degree, I believe in writing down your goals so you know what you want and impressing that on your subconscious mind. But I also believe you should write down your goals and press that on your subconscious mind and then take action 
to make those goals come true. There's a lot of manifestation channels on YouTube where you could just say these mantras, or write stuff down, and absolutely do nothing else to bring these goals or desires into reality. That's my problem with these channels. But many poor people, who's the biggest contributor to the lottery? Poor people. And the lottery sizes are getting astronomical. They're getting to a billion dollars. And one of the things that I consistently see with poor people is they feel that the people who got rich somehow broke the rules. Now, I know for a fact that you can get rich without breaking the rules. Myself, have I oppressed anyone to get my money? No. Have I taken advantage of anyone to get my money? No. So I know for a fact that through hard work, effort, goal setting, delayed gratification, and proper allocation of your monetary resources, is a way for you to get wealthy here in the United States of America. But the average poor person believes in false narratives and mythologies. And I really don't want to be around those people. And I'm going to tell you why. Years and years ago, um, my aunt Ines, let me go ahead and break down uh, my family. I had two sides of the family. I had one side of the family that was very much Cosby-like. These were people who were going to, my Uncle Jimmy owned the real estate brokerage. My cousins went to Cornell. So these were black business owners living that Cliff and Claire Huxtable lifestyle. That was one half of my family. And the other half of my family were a bunch of Alabama country bumpkins who were fun. I got to give it to them. They were fun. These folks, they could put on the party. They could put on the cookout. These folks were fun. And to their credit, they were hardworking, decent people. They were clean. They had class. They had manners, you know. So these were the two parts of my family. And I remember my Aunt Inez, who was part of the Cosby at, at Cosby S side of the family, she was down here and she saw some of our neighbors rolling around in the mud and she just looked at them with utter contempt and disgust. And I didn't understand why she was looking at them like that because they were my friends. And later on in life, I remember when I first got some money. I was in a eatery and these people came in who it was clear that they had saved up to come to this eatery. They, they weren't dressed appropriately. They were loud. They were cutting up. And on my face, that same look that my Aunt Inez had, I had. Because I understood why she was feeling that way. So understand, rich people, well-to-do people do not want to be around poor people for a variety of reasons. Number one, jealousy. I have people subscribe to this channel just to hate. Now, a white YouTuber can go out and buy a Ferrari, a Ferrari or a Lambo, and people in the comments like, you go Brad, you go Tiffany. And I have people who are hating. And this is one of the things I discovered once I got some first money. I had a friend, and this is when I got the, the big job that was paying me crazy money. And I bought myself a brand new BMW and I went to his house. And we had the type of friendship where I could just drop by unannounced. So I thought. And after I showed up with that brand new BMW, our, fr our friendship, unbeknownst to me at the time, ended. And this is something that I have seen time and time again. When you ascend the economic social class ladder, you get some people who congratulate you and you get people who did not ascend the social class ladder who just hate, just hate. You know who are my biggest cheerleaders? My millionaire friends. My millionaire friends are my greatest supporters, my biggest cheerleaders. I could call them up. I can send them a picture of my new car. I can do all kinds of stuff and it ain't nothing but love. You wanna know why? Because they understand what it takes to get here. See, right now there is this felonious notion 
called the lucrative side hustle is it's all over YouTube that and you could go to Google machine and you'll see there's this newspaper called the Sun that will consistently report hey I only work three hours a day but I make nine thousand dollars a month if you're making money 150 200 300 400 thousand a million dollars a year you're working and you're working more than 40 hours these are facts. So all of my millionaire friends who have established businesses, who have reached a certain level of wealth, they understand what it takes to get here. But once again, remember what I said about poor people believing in these false narratives? Right now, I literally get it in the comments that you don't have to work hard, you don't have to experience delayed gratification. You don't have to do the things that I consistently put out that you have to do to be successful. No, 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 no. Bad Barbie, you know, she made $52 million a year. Let's go ahead and take Bad Barbie. How did Bad Barbie get into the social consciousness? Dr. Phil. So unless you were on Dr. Phil's show acting like a wild little brat, that's what she was doing. That's how she got into the social collective consciousness. So if you don't believe me, you go ahead, if you're a woman and you're halfway attractive, you go ahead, you start your Instagram account and you get you 16 million followers and then you start you an OnlyFans account and you make your 52 million if it's so easy. Please do that today, but go ahead and get that going. Let me know your results 10 years from now because once again, proximity bad barbie had a following that was put together by her antics on the dr phil show but once again you have people who will not do that analysis and they think that she just went ahead on twitter and she got instagram and she got like 16 million followers then she dropped only fans she made 50 like it was so easy and there, there's there's a title there's a topic on youtube getting rich is easy i consistently see this in the eco the youtube eco space and if getting rich is so easy. Why do you have people who are going homeless every day? See, here's the thing, and this is, I want you to let me cook here. I'm about to cook for a minute. Let's say Carl Renfield, the guy who claims to be a billionaire through cryptocurrency, and he did it in five years. Let's say that was true. So if you could become a billionaire in five years, you should be able to become a millionaire in a year or two, right? Why are all of these people going homeless? Why are all these people being priced out of the home market? Because they cannot afford to qualify to buy a home. Why are all these people being laid on car? Car repossessions are starting to skyrocket. So if getting rich is so easy, why do we have all of these people getting their cars repossessed, getting evicted, not paying their credit card bills, not having money to be able to buy food for their children. If getting rich is so easy, why do we have all these bad situations and bad outcomes? Um, frankly, I'm tired of getting rich is easy YouTube videos because is getting rich rocket science complicated? No, it's not. No, it's not. But it takes a certain level of discipline, aptitude, dedication, and it takes a work ethic to get rich in these United States of America. And right now, I am just seeing a bunch of, I don't even know how to call it. But once again, I understand my aunt Inez and I understand her condemn. Because here's the thing, right now, you have a contamination and it's not just black kids, it's white kids. You have kids who grew up middle class or upper middle class who are being influenced by the lower classes. There's something called hype beast. Google it, the hype beast. This is something that is rooted in hip hop and lower class energy. And there are a lot of white kids who ascribe to be the hype beast. So what you're seeing is that the lower social economic strata, if left unchecked, will contaminate 
anything that touches it. So this is why my aunt Anes, she did not let my cousins even associate with, she actually flatly told him, you can't play with those children. Cause she knew that the contamination effect can happen. And if I go on Airbnb and see someone else in that, guess what? I'm reporting them. I don't want to live in a hotel. If I wanted to live in a hotel, I would have moved into a hotel. I don't want to live in a hotel. I don't, I, I'm just sitting there like, and for those of you who are leaving those comments, you know, you should be careful. I'm not even worried. I'm not even worried. You want to know why? Those folks are not watching this YouTube channel. They're not watching this YouTube channel. Cause I, once again, and I, I'm getting ready to tell y'all something. I discovered an error of my ways. Yep. And I have scientific evidence. I have started not one, but two new YouTube channels. And I'm not gonna let the people of this YouTube channel know about them. I'm gonna tell you why. Number one, thank you to the wise, sensible, nerd tribe and the people who bought products. I'm not talking to you guys. You guys get it. But once again, if I let the people of this YouTube channel, of course the positive people will go to the new YouTube channel, right? But so will the negative people. And what's going to happen is this is how the YouTube algorithm works. I'm about to teach you some things because this group of people will start watching that new YouTube channel. The YouTube algorithm will do like if you're familiar with Facebook marketing or advertising, it's called a lookalike audience. So if all of these people go to this new YouTube channel, the YouTube algorithm will say, oh, this is the kind of people who like this type of content. And it will go out and find more of those losers. This is what happened to this channel. This is what happened to Sa like Savage Finance. Savage Finance, once again, the positive people. I appreciate you guys. Thank you for going there for the support. They moved there. The channel was growing quite quickly. And then the worthless people went to the channel. And in my YouTube algorithm, I can go in and see what other channels people are watching. And I like this, the bulk of this current audience watches a lot of YouTube channels that I personally think are trash. And that tells me, once again, I'm not talking to the nerd tribe, I'm not talking to the people who buy courses, I am talking to the haters, the dissenters, the people who want to consistently challenge me. So these new YouTube channels, I am not letting, cause that's what's gonna happen. And I'm gonna have the same problems when the new YouTube channel that I have over here. I've literally seen white creators go out and buy a Lambo, get a mansion, get a big house, and there's nothing but love. And I'm gonna explain to you, there is a mixed fitness creator here on YouTube. Uh, apparently she has a white mother or white father or something, but she's, you know, she's part white, she's part black. The channel has two million subscribers and I went through her comment sections and guess who's supporting this? Cause once again, she she's pretty in the face. She's very pretty in the face, but her body, she has very small boobs. In my opinion, she has a very average body. Once again, like the average white girl. And guess who's supporting her? She has a very broad and mixed audience. I will see white person after white person come in on her channel. And that's why her channel took off because she doesn't have just black people. I would say based upon the way that she acts and her husband is white and the way that she presents herself, that she has a very small black audience. And that's why her channel is booming. She has a 2 million YouTube, she has uh, 1.7 million on TikTok. She has her own app. She lives in a gorgeous house, gorgeous house. And her community, her white side supports her and they get her app and uh, I didn't even get into whatever product she's selling, but that just showed me typically because these other content creators, I'm not even gonna mention their names, but there's some people that, because th what, is, what is this channel about? The Institute of Economic Thought, I'll give you an example. There's a um, white guy with a weird little hair, Economic Ninja, he talks about the economy. This dude puts out a video, he gets 40 to 80,000 views per video. And he's talking about the same stuff I'm talking about, but he has a white 
audience. That's why he gets these views. He doesn't have, once again, I'm not talking to the people who support me, I'm not talking to my nerds, but I'm, the ghetto ass component of my audience is one of the reasons that this channel isn't bigger than it is. That's one of the things. And um, like, I had a bunch of people, cause I did that video last October, a bunch of people who came over to the channel and the channel kind of like started growing, then it regressed. So yeah, I've got two, possibly three, I'm working it out and I'm just not going to let um, the people of this channel know about it, maybe never, but at least a year or two for it to season where I can get a different audience. I've had people who have taken my courses, who've listened to this channel, who've experienced extreme success, but these are the progressive black folks. These are not the ghetto ass black folks. And once again, like I said, the richer people do not want to spend time with poor, broke ass people. They just don't. 